Hey there, Rodrigo here for Textualize and in this 10th video of our stopwatch series I'm going to show you how we can actually update the time that's shown in our time display. We're going to see how to do that and for that we're going to use the magic of reactive attributes. And a reactive attribute is just an attribute that when it's changed, when it's changed, Textual can react to its changes. And that's pretty much what we see here with the self.dark. Dark here is a reactive attribute. When the value changes, Textual reacts to those changes by updating the color scheme of the application. And we're going to create a similar thing. We're going to create a reactive attribute for the time that has been elapsed so that whenever that amount of time changes, Textual reacts to those changes and updates the value that's shown here. So to create a reactive attribute, you first need to go ahead and from textual.reactive, you're going to import reactive. So that's simple. Now inside our time display widget, you're going to type, you're going to create a class variable, so time elapsed, and you assign it to reactive. So this creates a reactive attribute. And now what you need to do is you need to tell Textual how to react to the changes to this time elapsed reactive attribute. Now let's make, let's pause this, let's go to the app and take a look at the actions here. So this binding creates an action that runs an action method. And so similarly, reactive attributes or reactive attributes, we provide watch methods that watch for changes to those attributes. So if there's a time elapsed reactive attribute, we can watch for changes on that attribute with a watcher method called watch time elapsed. So this method runs whenever this thing is changed. And so what we're going to do is whenever this is changed, we're going to take the time and we're going to update the string here. So how do we do that? Well, thankfully, statics have a method called update. So you just do self.update with a string representation. This is going to be a something to get us started off with. Now, how do we actually change the time elapsed? Well, for starters, to, to, to see this working, to see the reactive actually triggering the watch method, let's go ahead and whenever the stop button is pressed, Let's just pretend that the time elapsed was a couple of seconds. And so to do that, we need to access the time display that's inside the stopwatch and we need to change the value of the attribute. So how do we do that? Well, first we need to get a hold of the time display widget and you can do that by querying the widget stopwatch. So how does that go? Notice that this stopwatch is composed of four sub widgets, right? So in here you can do something like self.query1 and this method is going to query the children of self, that is the children of the stopwatch, and it's going to look for a single widget that matches whatever selector you put here, whatever CSS selector you type in here. All right, and this only works, query one only works because there's one and only one time display inside. So this is the query one at, at the same time it says give me the only time display you find and ensure there's only one. There's one and only one. So this is the time display. And now you can access the time elapsed and just say something like 7.3. And now if you run the app, if you start and if you stop, you can see that the 7.3 showed up over there. Now similarly, we can already reset the time. Why? Because when we reset the timer, there's no elapsed time or there shouldn't, there shouldn't have been none. So we could actually already reset that. Now what I want to do is I want to make, I want to make sure that the formatting here is correct. So I'm going to delete that. And over here, where I'm watching for the time, let's actually update this correctly. So we're going to use the built-in div mode. 
And this is a, sorry, not hours, it's seconds. This is a fairly standard way of taking a certain number of seconds and converting it to hours, minutes and seconds. So that's the time that's left. Now the time string is going to be an F string. I'm not going to explain this in detail, but you can you can just look it up. Hours, minutes. So zero decimal decimal places, and now the seconds they're going to take up five spaces and two decimal places. So that should be it. And now instead of updating this this, we update the nice time stream. So if we run the app, we see that this is looking nice, and so is the 7.3. All right, so this uses a reactive with a time elapsed to update the time there. Now what we want to do is we want to keep track of the time that actually elapses. We don't want to have a random amount of time. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use start and stop methods inside our time display. So we're going to create a method start. And this is going to, sorry, I didn't mean to open this. This is going to start keeping track of the time elapsed and a stop method that's going to stop keeping track of the time elapsed and might as well create a reset method that's going to reset the time elapsed right so these three methods these are going to be called by our three buttons. So there's a start, a reset, and a stop button. And those will defer to the time display methods. So now how do we do that? Well, we've seen how to access a time display. So now instead of changing its attributes directly, we're just going to call the appropriate methods. So inside the start, we're going to say self.query1 time display. Now I'm writing it without quotes because it also works. And it's slightly nicer because now autocompletion knows that whatever comes out of here should be a time display. So I'm going to do a similar thing here. Query one time display dot stop. And now I'm going to create a similar thing for the reset button. So on button dot pressed, and in particular if the button had the ID reset, then def reset stopwatch. What this should do is we read the only time display inside and reset it. All right, so now we hooked up the buttons to the time display. Now we just need to do some maths. When we start, we need to keep, we need to start keeping track of the time. So what we're going to do is, we're going to from time import monotonic. And monotonic here, it's, this is similar to time.time. .time but it's slightly better for our purposes because if the system clock goes back, because I don't know, the user changed the time, the, the time returned by this function will not change. So you won't get negative times, which would be weird. So when the clock starts, we need to say that the start time is whatever time it's monotonic, whatever time is now. And when we stop, we're going to say that the elapsed time is whatever time it is now minus the start time so this difference is the total time that was elapsed now if i run the app right now pressing start seems to do nothing it, it seems like it's doing nothing but when i press stop nothing happens because i made a mistake let me see what i did wrong so when we stop we update the elapsed time, which is, sorry, it's not elapsed time, it's time elapsed. So that's the issue. So now I can start the three buttons. And whenever I stop one, the, right, the time elapsed reactive is updated, which means that the text here gets updated as well. Now, obviously, we want this to update in real time to show the time ticking. But this is an excellent start. And if I stop, it just overwrites. So we're still left with implementing reset because it does nothing right now and showing real time updates of the time and also accumulating the time if you pause and restart 
your timer. So that's it for now. I know this was a lot. Reactive attributes are awesome, but they might look weird at first. So make sure you understand what's going on here and then proceed to the next video. I'll see you soon. Bye.